Whiskey Throttle Spotlight is brought to you by Yamaha, the leaders in the power sports industry. Join the blue crew today. By Nihilo Concepts, boost your bike's performance, reliability, and aesthetics with Nihilo products. Flowvision, high performance goggles and eyewear. And by Complete Racing Solutions, your one stop shop for human performance and wellness. Hey everybody, it's Ping. Thanks for tuning in to Whiskey Throttle Media. And we're here today with a really cool project. John from Mullet Moto has built some really rad Hondas over the years. And we've had the pleasure of testing a few of them. And today we've got another one. And this is your 91 CR250 that has a little bit of a JMB theme. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this thing, man. Yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously I like doing old Hondas. And I, I uh, got this thing. It was kind of a long story, but kind of a friend of mine told me, hey, man, I just talked to a guy who's got a CR250. I think he wants to sell. And I linked up with him picked it up and because I can't say no <laughs> and so I bought it and kind of stashed it away for a little bit and uh, I've been having fun doing these factory replicas or tributes or whatever you want to call them and so 91 of course is a cool year uh, and everybody for 91 is always doing Stanton replicas and so I thought let's do something different and I think JMB you know I don't want to say underrated but maybe under recognized over here you know, I mean, you ever underappreciated? Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. You like, watch now, and, and you know, Moosekin and Roxin and, and Ferrandis and all these fast guys, and everybody's embracing them and stuff. And you know, GMB didn't really have that same uh, welcoming, you know, but he was just as good or, or better than any of the guys that have ever run over here. And so I thought, you know what, let's do a tribute to him. So was this a full down to the frame, powder coat the yeah. frame, the whole deal? Yeah, whole thing. And what'd yeah. you do to the motor? So motor's got a uh, crank rebuild. Tom Morgan ported it and did uh, head work on it for race gas. And then these had an issue. There's even a, a, a Bolton, like technical Bolton Honda put out with carburetors that they had kind of venting problems and they would bog under G outs and stuff. And so I swapped the carburetor. It's running a 94 quad vent carb. Okay. And then the pipe that was on it when I bought it is this SPES, which I'd never heard of. And it turns out it's a Belgian brand and uh, it was clean and stuff and i'd read that they work good and i thought well dude that's perfect it's a you know jmb why not have a little bit of euro flair with the exhaust so we're running that uh, spes and uh it seems to run good and i mean when you were riding by it freaking barks it sounds radical oh it goes um there's another little difference in the forks too that was something else that you updated tell us a little bit about that yeah so 89 was the first year of the inverted forks and those early inverted forks Honda anyways had a lot of problems with them they were harsh they were wearing the internals out and stuff like that and so I had a 96 set laying around and so I thought well you know let's throw these on there to upgrade it so it's got a 96 front end and then that makes it easy to run oversized front rotor and then upgraded uh, front master and calipers and all that stuff so yeah it, it's cool any parts that were really hard to find on this or hard to get I mean even the tank, I know you kind of, it's hard to find these in good shape new. Yeah. Like, you know, we've said this before, you start to get into the 90s and the parts availability is way easier. Like plastic is mostly UFO and the UFO stuff is really nice and it makes it easy. You don't have to do a bunch of crazy restoration with plastic. Um, I did refinish the tank a little bit, but the nice thing about it, there isn't actually that much of it exposed. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty small area to have to kind of you know sand and polish and stuff when you start getting into those older older 80s tanks i mean they're huge and there's so much area and so much labor yeah. involved with with uh cleaning them up so these this one wasn't too bad so pretty fun build for y'all and all though oh yeah yeah i love them well i can tell you on the track um yeah anytime we ride something older i'm always a, definitely a little skeptical at first just to make sure it's not going to react funny and you know what was the geometry like on these bikes how did they handle i got comfortable pretty quick on this thing it was just having fun uh we did we were talking about the forks got like some mid-stroke harshness but the factory connection guy said like hey i got it's a 96 fork i can give you a 96 setting but that doesn't mean it's going to work on a 91 so good luck the really fun part to me was that the cockpit feels really comfortable um not as old as you know even just a year or two years prior it's starting to get a little flatter a little bit like more modern and the motor is incredible just really good roll on and then great power all the way through. This thing really isn't that far off something current. Yeah. So there's a lot of that things, you you updating the front brake. That's another problem anytime you start talking vintage or Evo bikes, brakes start to really become an issue. And 
man, this thing stops good yeah, with that does. new whole front end. It so does. it's the fun of older bikes, but with the up, upgrades of current stuff. Yeah, for sure. And that's so. one of the things that's cool when you start doing these factory replicas, it's like, okay, well, we're free to do whatever we think we need to do to make it work good, because that's exactly what Honda would have done in 1991 for him. Yep. When you start trying to keep things more, you know, period correct or more original, well, then you get locked into those pencil thin uh, pegs and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Well, and one thing I love about not all of your projects, but this one in particular, you're going to ride this thing. Yeah. This isn't made to hang on the wall. You're going to the vintage races and you're going to have some fun on this yeah, thing. Yeah, for sure. Maybe some vet racing too. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So who was the kind of the big supporters that helped you with parts on this thing? Um, well, I worked a lot of overtime to pay for a lot of the parts. Uh, but then uh, Dunlop helped me out with tires. Uh, Henson set me up with a clutch basket hmm. and a clutch pack. Uh, Works Connection helped me out with the levers. UFO with the plastics. Um, and I try to run all the best stuff I can, and I feel like those products are pretty top notch. So thanks to those guys, I appreciate it. I love it. Well, thanks so much for letting us have a ride on it. Everything from just, you know, how light and quick it feels with the engine. Like I said, it's a really broad, usable motor. Turns on a dime. Like these older bikes seem a little bit smaller than kind of a current, a current even two stroke. Um, so for me, it just, it, it makes it feel really nimble and, and easy to turn fun to jump. I mean, everything about it was just really playful and fun. And, um, I had complete trust in it right away, which is fun. Yeah. You get on something this old and feel like you can just pin it. Yeah. Well, it was just awesome. Thanks so much for letting us have a ride. I, I always appreciate you letting us take a turn on these. So hope you guys enjoyed a look at this thing. We've got more coming. Stay tuned.